Hey guys and welcome to another episode of Azuri Plays Flood of Light. So I've got to make two announcements. The first one was that I went back and I did all the wicks and I realised I missed out a message in the last level so I've got all of that so I've got all the collectibles but also I tried recording this um, episode yesterday or something like that but I didn't turn on the audio so that was a flop but with that but I'm gonna go through the puzzle again but I'll read out the messages so that we all know what's going on hopefully um, the puzzles won't take me as long or, or I might just mix and match the clips from the previous recording and this one so let's go with, let's go with that but I'm really sorry it's not an authentic first time impression of that particular level but I'll try and make sure that the next one, next couple are... I think we're nearly done with the game, to be honest, because it says we're at 77.3% completion. And, yeah, so this is the one I missed out. This message is the one I missed out when I was in the previous level, I think level 4, or floor 4. So, let's go and read that. 4th of May, 2016. Extremely heavy rain, yellow alarm. City controls committee officially announces yellow alert today. Low areas and temples will be the first target to be submerged by rainwater. Blue light centre is still not capable of activating and there appears to be a gap in supply and power to maintain, uh, maintain sunlight monoliths. Someone from city control committee reached out to me this morning and asked me if executing WO2 can stop raining. The answer is impossible. Loses an energy container. The energy from the planet gathering inside humans' body and transform in life shape. Thus it is more of a container than life. The energy which loses a container to hold will only release madly if we execute WO2. And the city will be destroyed by extremely heavy rain sooner or later. Dr. S. So then I went on and did the level, obviously, and this was for the first message I got from that level. 12th of May 2016. Extremely heavy rain, orange alert. The team has tried over and over again, still unable to activate Blue Light Center. Even though I'm struggling about it, I have to make the cruel decision. I have applied the request to City Control Committee that they approved it without a hitch. 10 days buffer. If Blue Light Center still cannot be operated, we will send WO2 to the confined cabin. It is a critical time to the city and it just seems one person's sacrifice can stop everything. From the aspect of city control committee, they will not hesitate to do it. Moreover, they don't even consider WO2 as a human as well. She is more like a monster that triggers tremendous economic loss to the Dr. S. So far, it's really sad because um, Lou's clearly still a little girl and she's a daughter of somebody, she's like 10 years old and they're willing to kill her just to save the city. It kind of, it sounds like a heroic deed but I think it's just unnecessary maybe? Well she survived so far so we'll see where this goes. So this is the second one, you can see us in like a little chamber incubation thing. Um, 22nd May 2016, the deadline, extremely heavy rain, red alert, we failed, blue light centre is not being activated within 10 days, it is the deadline now, we'll have to send WO2 to the confined cabin from isolation room today, she grasps the bare door that Mr Lee gave her, even to the last minute. We have no choice but to let her take the bear doll into the confined cabin with her. It will put her into a temporary death status under minus 196 degrees cold and the power of Luz will, will stop releasing because of the frozen container. If it runs as smoothly as we expect, continuous rain that has lasted over a month and a half will start to reduce. While walking to the confined cabin, WO2 shows no resistance. Till the frozen gas fills up the cabin, she says something with her last consciousness, which really terrified me. Fairy, I'm coming. Dr. S. I literally have no clue who Fairy is, what he does, none of that, but 
let's go back and do level two, uh, floor two, because that's what I, I thought I'd record. Because I feel bad that the audio didn't work out, but whatever. Floor two, life and energy lab. Welcome to Life and Energy Lab, Almighty Guide. The seventh pedestal is the water pedestal. It's behind this door. Just like the train, humans shut down the power of this lab when they evacuated the city. There are five generators in Life and Energy Lab corresponding to the five indicators of the door. The power indicator charges when the lamp linked to it is lit up, just like with the power source switches. When all five power indicators on the door have been lit up, the door behind me will open. Come back here when that ha happens. Through this door is the sealed chamber laboratory. There you can activate the water pedestal and then you can go to the residential area. Um, yeah, so this robot was actually dead. So I revived him and that's what he told me. And then there's a camera around here. This follows me, you can kind of see, which I thought was kind of creepy. Don't really know why it's monitoring me if there's no one there. But here, this is the first puzzle. Now, I'm gonna speed run this one because I don't know if I can do it fast enough or otherwise the episode's gonna be super long. But once I've completed the puzzle, we'll go back to commentating. So I don't know if that's like a generator thing, I think I needed to turn it on, it's not really the first puzzle. So this is the first one out of five because it says we have five indicators. So we'll see where this goes. Um, I think I'll get the wick here. Darkness, my old friend. So this is the first out of five. I'm hoping. It was at this moment that he knew he fucked up. <laughs> works and that one of these light switches here will light up. Um, on to the second one. And that's two out of five. This is three out of five. I don't really know. This one took me the longest, I'm not gonna lie. The first I did quite quickly. Um, there might be a few restarts on this one, so bear with. And we'll see you guys on the other side. expectation of what I should be um, achieving or anything like that so it's just completely just me giving it a go four of 
five is quite easy, just literally just light up that one thing. But I walked past this door like 20 times in my first run, and the episode was just like 30 minutes long as well. So I'm kind of glad I um, that I went through that. This is where the first message was the the there I can't even speak English anymore. This is where the first message was and um yeah, so this was the orange alert that I read earlier. And this was the picture for it in case just a little recap. Um but yeah. That's five out of five, but I'm gonna have to go back because I know that I'm missing um, a wick or two wicks. So um, hopefully I can sort this out. That's all the wicks so far. Um, just a little recap. That's four out of four and one robot. And now we're gonna head over to the door that we had to power up. I think my next game that I will play will be a bit more action packed, um, just because of a different dynamic. So this is the container that she was in, um, you can see some life here, some greenery, we haven't really seen any greenery since, um, this is the message again, I read this at the beginning, you can see the tree, um, the tree like structure, incubator thing, so this is definitely like moss and whatnot, which is quite cool that they've um, tried to incorporate that. You can still see some skyscraper buildings, I'm assuming, at the back. But with that being said, this is the end of the episode. We've just completed level 2, 4, 2, whatever. So I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys in the next one where it will be a true first playthrough.